The real Hugh Hendry is a world away from the outspoken, bombastic character with whom investors have become familiar over the years. Behind the sometimes prickly personality lies a thoughtful, introspective man who owns not only his mistakes, but everything he says, and who has no problem with being told he's wrong and why. In my recent conversation with Hugh at his home in St. Bart, he recounted one of his biggest mistakes and the lessons he learned from what he called the arrogance and conceit of a well-formed argument. And he explained the pure joy of creating a complex trade and then daring to dream. This is just a taste of what was an incredible and surprising conversation that will stay with me for a very, very long time. Edinburgh was full of uh, young, old men. Right. Yes. I, yes. I wore a, a damn waistcoat. <laughs> Come on. Did. And we got these suits, that, like heavy, heavy wool. I wore it once down to London for a presentation, and on the tube, I mean, I nearly passed. Sweat, yeah. It was just, yeah. You know. <laughs> but um, I got my 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 big chance. I thought I discovered the the. So our big thing was, can you imagine you could find the stock that Warren Buffett buys next? Yeah. And I was sure I. I, I had found it. And it was Reader's oh God, it's <laughs> pains me to say Reader's Digest. And I clung on and clung on and despite all of the evidence. But so Reader's Digest, you know, here's something where um, it'd been around forever. The, the DeWitt and Lila Wallace had set this up where unbelievably rich and you were just taking newspaper clippings yeah. and compa- putting it together. Um, and, and there were all these stories about after the Berlin Wall came down and like at the it, for so many people trapped on the wrong side of the wall, except with communism, Reader's Digest was like Coca-Cola. <laughs> if only. I had been, I really bought into the story that you know, Reader's Digest was this iconic everything about America. Yeah. And, um, and it's a little bit like, I also had an investment in WD-40, which was very successful. Really. I love w, WD-40, yeah, the, yeah, the, the lubricant. Yeah. Um, and it, um, a Spanish person thinks it's Spanish. A British person yes. thinks it's a British company. Um, and it was, you know, it was water displacement test number 40 for one of the NASA projects, which worked. I, I've been to visit them. And they literally, their office is, is a broom cupboard full of WD-40. Um, I bet the door opens easily. Uh, yeah. Um, so you know, Reader's Digest was, in this, I, I mentioned WD-40 in the uh, people... Uh, UK, there was a Reader's Digest UK, and so people had identified it as being also, they saw it as both being uh, very much close to, to their life, but also at, at large, it was an image of America. Um, zero um, input costs, just the license to print money. Um, and, and what that, you know, so this is all before I meet Crispin, and this yeah. is all before, you know, the, the raison d'etre is you buy things which go up. Yes. You don't buy things, you know, this thing had IPO'd and been a complete and utter bomb. And you know, we ran concentrated portfolios at Bailey Gifford. And I saw five or six percent equity. Just this is going to happen, guys. This is going to happen. It was, it was just one of those. They, you know, they, they took it from their senior partners. Like we're we're closing out with this position. <laughs> this is the worst ever. They kind of got the kind of Warren Buffett type things, but um, but that was very very. Uh, that's why I embraced Crispin because actually I was able to then. Yeah, I, you because I think we you definitely you say how does it feel to make fifty percent? You kind of you just move on immediately. Yeah. Um, what is it like to to lose fifty percent in a position? You, That's the one you go back over yeah. and again yep. and again. And that Reader's Digest was one I just went by over again. And, and what did you, what did you learn from it? Um, well, I I I learned that um, the how you you become hostage to the clever you. You can be hostage to the clever narrative. That the the narrative has to have the legitimacy of a damn trend. Yeah. Right. That the things don't happen just because you've come across some some whizzy theory. Right. Yeah. Um, and back to that notion of inventory management. By all means, come up with these ideas. You know, um, monitor them. But it's the diligence and and the the wisdom to apply them only when they become yeah. relevant. And that thing. I mean, it it, it went bankrupt. Yeah. It, you know, we were talking about, it, it was a business that, we were talking about the music industry, um, and the music industry now is, is booming again. Um, but Reader's Digest was a business that had no future. <laughs> That's right. And I had no means, I had no warning signal in my intellectual little toolkit uh, to take me out of that.
So I, I learned from that the, the arrogance and the conceit of a well-formed argument. Yeah. Uh, that was my thing. I always liked that sort of knife blade at, at the back of my spine pressing upon me and if I became complacent, bang, you know, the clients can take the money. Um, but towards the end, if I was to devise a, a, a model um, with regard to um, remuneration or what have you, it would be actually someone coming and saying, I, I want you, I need you. If you are actually fulfilling the mandate, I need you to lose between five and 10% a yep. year. Um, because in this world, with the way asset prices are, I can afford, like I can give you 5% yeah. of my capital, yeah. less than 5% and it's basically. But you have to be uncorrelated. You have to, all the And that was my disappointment that the, given the, the, the remarkable low correlation that we had, and that we never blew up, and that we always retained this extraordinary convexity, uh, like if we were right with the thesis. It was, it was boring that we didn't have that patient, permanent type yeah. capital. They just, like, they, they didn't want to know, there wasn't phone you at the end of each month saying, well, what was the figure, what was the figure, what was the figure? Um, but, the, you know, we're not here to, dis to, to have this prognosis of what's, what's about to happen in markets, but the, the great challenge is it's never now been harder to diversify portfolios. Yeah. Um, I mean, with regard to the permanent portfolio, that notion of a little bit of everything, I just don't see how any, how you, you'd get enough of an offset if things really um, Start moving run around. away. Yeah. So um, I could definitely have fun with that. And and I'd, you, I would, I think we were discussing the, you know, what's it like making 50% or whatever, um, or what's it like managing money, the, the great, the thing that I remember most clearly was, you know, it was like a, a child on Christmas Eve, like when you, when you create some of these convex trades and you think, what if we're right? Yeah. Just what if we're right? And again, not like, oh my God, we're going to make $10 million. You right. never think about that. It's just like, oh my God, what if we're, like I'm that yeah. kid that, that, that calls it. Yeah. You know? And all these cogs turn uh, in the right way that we've put them together. Uh, and then, you know, it's, we meet these fascinating people and we're all, trying to read material and what's his uh, the wonderful Chris Cole with the piercing yes. blue eyes Artemis uh, volatility tra to trader what I think he had a piece I want to say 2012 maybe early 2013 the uh, volatility at the end of the world which I thought was just the, the yeah. best paper he, he's, I yeah, he's ever a, he's... read it just so many things went off in my head that I find a lot of it hard to yeah, understand yeah. whenever there's all that, that Greek algebra. Um, but, you know, again, I just called upon my, my brain trust that I had around me. I was like, okay, you know, like Jeremy Irons and Margin Call, um, think of me as the family Labrador. I want you to pitch this complex trade to the Labrador. Again and again yep. and again. And 2013, we, we were flat. And it was a tough year, but it was exciting. We, we conceived of it. It was very much trying to create. So Chris was noting that he reckoned back testing, whatever, that with the with Weimar and the hyperinflation, that volatil that stock prices went up and volatility went up. Um, and there's no great reason. Like, you know, the, it's the inverse. Uh, with with stocks ever yeah. since the the eighty seven stock market crash, but in, in other asset classes that ha that happens and it happens all the time. And so he was so he was trying to conceive of a world where volatility could go up with stock prices going up and the ramifications that that would have on the convexity of a position. I mean, you could have something that would just. So we constructed. We looked. We were drawn to Japan because uh, when we had. Um, uh, when we had the new administration come through in 2012 um, and the three arrows, et cetera, yep. and then the great excitement, you actually had a moment where vol surged higher as the stock market moved higher, as, as the Nikkei went higher. And so we'd conceived of this, you know, it was that, that little th a death thing you have with yeah, the beads yeah, the, and the I pendulum. Yeah, the cradle, yeah. 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 And, we, and so we, we, could, we were looking for like a, a very rapid 2,000 point type move, which is a big move. Um, and the vol ramifications, and I, sp a, I spent 
it was very hard to try and explain the the intricacies of what yeah. we were doing. So it definitely failed the complexity. It was a complex trade, and, and that was ultimately its its failing. Uh, on top of that, we ended up being long volatility, long stock volatility, equity stock vol volatility in a world where quantitative easing world where love Just it or otherwise, it. vol comes down. Um, but there was a joy. Uh, yeah. that, that's the, it, and that's what I miss. It's that, what if we're, it's like, what if Santa comes? Yeah. yeah. What, what's going to be under the tree? Yeah. yeah. It's, that, it's the intellectual challenge of putting this puzzle mm. together. Yeah.